Hello. I want to briefly discuss a theory concerning the nation of France in the Star Trek Prime Universe timeline and update you on some other Trek expertise stuff. But first, France. Okay, so here's the theory. France, which began sometime in the last 2,000 years, will end during World War III in the mid-21st century, uh, a conflict that's supposed to start in about six years. So, uh, yeah, looks like we're right on schedule. And by ended, I mean ended. Uh, that's the theory, anyway. Let's go over the details. Lingua France. A lingua France, France. The French language has existed for thousands of years. It started out as a mixture of Latin, which came in with the Roman Empire, and the various native Celtic languages of Gaul, the region that would become France. Over the centuries, this linguistic soup transformed into the French language and has been evolving for well over a thousand years now. But curiously, by the 24th century, French would seem to have one foot in the grave. That is from an obscure language known as French. That's a drastic change from the here and now. Today, 275 million people speak French globally. Like many bits of offhand world building in the Star Trek franchise, this little tidbit about the French language was offered up without any explanation. Was it the universal translator that was killing French? And presumably other languages? Did the French just decide that their language was dull and moved on to Federation standard? Or is there something else going on? After all, the French language is known by non-French speakers in the 23rd and 24th centuries. My ancestry is French, yes. Ah, oh, monsieur, vive la gloire, vive Napoleon. Avec plaisir. Pourquoi parlez-vous Klingon? Disrupting a space station is not an offense. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a ship to tend to. Au revoir. Sorry about your crew, but as we say on Earth, c'est la vie. Come on, Mr. Leach. Au revoir. Our destiny awaits. Maybe he spent all his money on furnishings and works of art. Objet d'art, of course. Objet d'art, of course. Ah, mes parents sont originaires de Bourgogne. Je suis né à la New Orleans. Alors, nous sommes presque frères. Je suis heureux de vous connaître. <laughs> I am a Frenchman. And let's not forget the most famous Frenchman in Starfleet. Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Enchanté. Comme t'es merveilleux de vous voir ici. Incroyable. Vous êtes parisienne. Au fond, c'est vrai, nous sommes tous parisiennes. Ah oui. Au fond, nous sommes tous parisiennes. Not only is Picard from France, despite sounding very un-French, but he's patriotic about it. Whereas, French. More properly, use the same colors in the order blue, white, and red. Let's dig into that. A Frenchman with an English accent. Uh huh. Sure. Now, as an audience, we typically accept this and move along. We accept that he's a Frenchman who is very clearly British. Tea? Well, grey, hot. Of course it's hot. What do you want in it? Nothing. Even when the franchise gives us English clearly accented with French, like these French-speaking actors playing aliens. Were you responding to my demand for better quarters? There are none better. I suggest you make do with these. You suggest? Tell me, would it help if I said that you could have an entire wardrobe made from these beautiful fabrics and that it would give all of us pleasure to create it for you? Let's start with the scar. Or even when Picard himself does a French accent. I thought that I looked a proper, at least sinister. Look, what accents get used and why in film and television, that's a long, complex history. For our purposes, we're not interested in the whys of production. We're interested in an in-universe explanation. So what is the in-universe explanation? Let's accept Picard's accent at face value and do some investigating. And I know what you might be thinking straight away. Isn't the Universal Translator doing the work of hiding Picard's Frenchness? Well, yeah, possibly. 
But if that's the case, then why are Worf's adoptive parents... You agreed not to embarrass him. Besides, we have come to see Worf, not the ship. Captain Montgomery Scott... Computer, shut this bloody thing off. Check off... Nuclear vessels. Dr. McCoy... This man shouldn't be dead. I can't find anything wrong with him. According to all the tests, he should get up and just walk away from here. Or trip. She did have a certain sensuality to her. Among others, speaking versions of English that denote regions outside of the Western, Midwestern accepted normal in U.S. media. Shouldn't we take their accents at face value? Yeah, we should. Frankly, it's hard to maintain disbelief when you have a show with multiple styles of accents where some of them are intentional and some of them are not in a show that is expressly about alien cultures. That's a lot of disbelieving to disbelieve. So in-universe, taking Picard's accent at face value, what if a clue as to what happened to France and the French language, what if there's a clue buried in Picard's family history? We know the Picard family possibly started out as Spanish or Castilian in origin. An ancestor of Captain Picard participated in the Spanish reprisal to the Pueblo Revolt of 1680 in the U.S. Southwest, a major event in the history between the Puebloan nations and what was becoming the nation-state of Spain. This is mentioned in the Next Generation episode, Journey's End. They killed hundreds of our people. Thousands more were maimed. The name of one of the soldiers... Zabier, Maribona, Picard, your ancestor. In Star Trek Generations, we also learn that an ancestor of Captain Picard participated in the Battle of Trafalgar, a naval engagement primarily between the Catholic nation-states of Spain and France and Protestant England, in which England prevailed. The Picards might still have been Spanish at this point, but it's possible they may have been French or English, too. We get to meet Jean-Luc's mother, only briefly. But why now? Suddenly. You mean out here? Is what you say is the end of the universe? Or do you see this as the beginning of it? She has what we can assume to be English with a French accent. Since Jean-Luc and his brother and nephew, Robert and René Picard, lived in the United Kingdom at an age young enough to acquire their accents, we must assume that the family emigrated to the UK sometime during Jean-Luc's mother's lifetime, but then moved back to the family vineyard in France sometime later, possibly after René was born to Robert and his wife Marie. You know, you don't seem so arrow. Arrow, you know. Arrogant? Yes. In fact, Jean-Luc and Robert might have lived in the UK from such an early age that they never learned French except later in life. I mean, Jean-Luc drinks tea and quotes Shakespeare. He's like a stereotype British wind-up toy. None of this really tells us what happens to France in the Star Trek Prime Universe timeline. This family history can be assumed to be one family's unique journey through the world. But combined with this... That is from an obscure language known as French. Well, it opens up more questions. Star Trek is famously littered with sporadic descriptions of Earth's greatest internal conflict, World War III. This much we know. It lasted for nearly 30 years and resulted in the death of some 600 million humans. Many of the Earth's major cities and governments were destroyed. That's it. There's nothing about France being specifically targeted in the mythology surrounding World War III. The stuff about Picard's family is incidental, even if we take Picard's accent at face value. And the thing about the dying French language that Data gives us, well, something clearly happened to France. But what? Here's our theory. So here it is. 
Our theory is that something significantly terrible happened to France sometime between now and Earth's last human-only conflict. So what if France was more or less wiped out during the Third World War? My money's on World War III as being the time period of France's demise, since it was so big and destructive a war. French language, population, culture all took a deep hit. Then, after the war, Britain and the rest of the world, feeling the need to restore the nation and culture of France, created a big international project designed to rehabilitate the destroyed country. The Great French Resurrection, a huge multi-generational effort. Immigration into France, repatriations, people rebuilding the French language, rebuilding cities and institutions. It's not a perfect explanation. The clues we have aren't big enough to really support this theory. But the idea is tantalizing. And the clues almost fit. Jean-Luc and his brother Robert may have been educated in the United Kingdom, only to return to France after their education was complete. This is a move that makes sense for a French family looking to rebuild their nation, and it makes sense for the obviously culturally British Jean-Luc. It also fits with Data's observation that French is an obscure language. By the 24th century, people would still be relearning French. A great resurrected France may require great effort, which expectedly would produce feelings of patriotism in an era where we see virtually none of that. Patriotism like we see with Jean-Luc. Part of that resurrection might be an effort to make France once again a center of global efforts, such as basing the office of the President of the United Federation of Planets there. Think of the great French resurrection like that of the Marshall Plan after World War II, when the United States and its allies worked to rebuild a war-ruined Europe. While this may be a global effort, perhaps the United Kingdom is a leader in the resurrection, which would be historically interesting. Britain trying to rehabilitate France would be like a reverse Norman invasion, an antithesis of the once hostile history between France and Britain over the centuries. A very Star Trek theme to play with. Look, it's just a theory and an excuse to talk to you. Let's see if you can take the clues presented here and turn them into another interesting theory. What do you think happened? Hello again. Thank you for watching. I uh, wanted to give you some updates uh, about the channel and about other things that we're involved in. For one, we've got more Trek expertise coming. We've got topics about time travel, about Ferengi religion, about metacosmological maps of the Star Trek multiverse. And we've got essays on other topics too. Tales from the Loop, Altered Carbon, uh, Disease and Sci-Fi. And maybe we'll even take a crack at that brand new Raised by Wolves on HBO Max. It's pretty good. Our recent short film, Garden of the Gods, is in its final phase of post-production. Music and sound and graphics are being added now. Cannot wait to show you this thing. It's gonna be really cool. So please forgive us in the delay of content. It's been a crazy year, you know it, and we're also in the middle of a move, so it's just been, it's just been insane. If you love the essays that we create, uh, find interesting the topics that we're discussing, then consider supporting us over on Patreon. Every little bit helps to make each successive essay bigger and more in-depth, and if that's something you want from us, that's certainly something we want to give, then consider supporting us. You can find our Patreon link in the subspace below. If you'd like to be notified when the next essay lands, then subscribe, turn on notifications, and especially sign up for our no-nonsense email list. The email list is the most efficient method. You can find all of the relevant links down in the subspace below. Thank you very much uh, for putting up with this weird stretch of a theory. Uh, looking forward to seeing your theory in the comments, and uh, we'll see you soon. Toy show -ryo. The French language for centuries on Earth represented civilization. Indeed.